Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about how to bind up all the components of your application in one domain. In most cases, a website based on a domain will be at the heart of every application you will build. You will need some documentation describing your product. You might need some uh, website, some API, some storage, anything, whatever the components are. And these components might be very different in nature, but you want to bundle them all up into one. So let's look at the different options you have to do this. Just think of your website at its core. So you have your domain, in this case, myapplication.com. And keep in mind, the domain is really just that. You have the top level domain and your domain. In most cases, you have a subdomain, for example, www myapplication.com and then you have a path that specifies which file which resource under this origin you want to access now this subdomain is resolved by your domain name server and sourced from one specific origin it can be a web server it can be a content delivery network can be something else too now i made a different video in which i showed how to use the subdomains to bind different content into one domain. So you can use this mechanism, for example, to bind a web application into your website or to add some fixed data storage for, let's say, large files that you don't want to have in your web server under the same domain, but in a separate subdomain. Further examples would be an API that is, for example, serving content or functionality to your Flutter application or whatever other mobile application it is. Now, all of that works perfectly well. However, there are some disadvantages if you have, for example, an API serving functionality, serving resources on a different subdomain than where your application or your website comes from. So to be precise, a web server would consider that a course, a cross origin resource sharing and need to verify that this is in this particular situation allowed. So by default, that would be restricted, but you can, for example, under api.myapplication.com, allow access to this API from a website served under www.myapplication.com or from a web application coming from a different subdomain. Now this is additional overhead of configuration to the browser. It also looks a little bit dodgy and wrong. So in this video, I would like to show a different way to do that. No matter what origin you're using, the path after the domain would specify what exactly you want to access from that origin. And it is possible to mix multiple origins under one. So for example, instead of having an API as a subdomain on your domain, you might as well mount it in the path. So everything under myapplication.com api.star will be routed to that API. That way, if you have a website from www.myapplication.com, and the API is under the same subdomain, but under a different path, it would no longer be considered a cross origin resource sharing, and it would be more clean from an access restriction point of view. And in the same way, you can also add storage from a, let's say an S3 bucket in the path of your website. So the other extreme would be to have everything under one domain, you can use the subdomain www, which is kind of optional and has more historical reasons and is typically identical or redirect to just the main domain. And you can mount your different components, let's say an API and the API gateway or storage from an S3 bucket or an application that would also be derived from an S3 bucket. And you mount that in different parts of your path and that way to the client it would look like it all comes from the same origin. Let's have a look at the AWS console and see how that can be done. So here I am in my AWS console and I'm in the CloudFront. I'm serving my website from a CloudFront distribution. 
And by default, a CloudFront distribution has one origin and everything it serves, it serves from that origin. So the two main areas to mount different origins together are origins and behavior. Under origin, I have in this case multiple origins set up. So one is a S3 bucket. You see here from S3. Uh, you see an API. That's a REST API that is hosted on the API gateway from AWS. And another S3 bucket where I host different parts of the content of my website. Now the behaviors specify which parts of your path will direct to which origin. So the origins are the multiple origins you can surf from and what to take from where is specified under behaviors. So for example, by default, everything comes from my website bucket and under rest, I have an API mounted, it's a REST API, hence the name. And under config, I have a, a web application that is part of my website hosted. And for the end user, it would like it's all one. It will also use the same SSL certificate because it's sourced from the same CloudFront distribution. You also see the viewer protocol. So some of my components will be accessible only via HTTPS and others will have a redirect. So that's how you bind multiple origins into one subdomain under one uh, CloudFront distribution. And you can mix and match in your application both of these schemes. You can have subdomains, uh, which is still a useful tool. Uh, so for example, for authentication, when you use a hosted UI for authentication, you can just map that as a subdomain into your domain. It will be provided via a different SSL certificate anyway. And for others, it's cleaner for the end user if it's distributed from one origin, from one CloudFront distribution. So really you have these two options to mix and match and define the best solution for your application. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe to this channel for more content like this.